So we'll start by looking at the anterior shoulder. The first structure we're gonna look to evaluate is the long head of the biceps tendon. So in this view, we're at the anterior shoulder, we're short axis on the biceps tendon. The bright line is the hyperechoic line of the humerus, the head of the humerus. The biceps tendon is sitting in the groove and we'll follow it up into the groove more there. And then as we go more proximal, it's going to wrap and go into the rotator cuff interval. So with all the structures, it's a scan. Remember that we're not just producing one static image, we're scanning the tissue to find the area of defects. So for the biceps tendon, we go down here to the pectoralis major insertion on the humerus, which is right there. And the biceps tendon is deep to that. And we follow it up along there into the bicipital groove and then into the rotator interval. And we scan everything in two planes. So here we're short axis on the biceps tendon. Then we're gonna rotate the probe 90 degrees and we're gonna go in long axis on the tendon so we can see the tendon sheath along there in better detail and make sure we don't miss any fluid accumulation along there. So that's a nice healthy looking long head of the biceps tendon. Now, since we're anterior, what we'll do is we'll externally rotate the shoulder just a little bit. And now we are in the subscapularis tendon. So our bony landmarks for this structure are the lesser tubercle of the humeral head right there where the tendon inserts. And then medially, that's the coracoid process of the scapula. So what we're looking for here, again, is we're scanning the uh, width and breadth of the subscapularis insertion and the tendon itself. Here, towards the coracoid process, we see some kind of hypochoic changes. That's actually part of the muscle belly as the myotendinous junction is coming into the tendon. So that's, that stuff in there is not a tear. That's just what normal muscle looks like. As we are scanning, we're re building our planes. And so the most superficial layer up on top, that's the skin. Then the next layer we see is the deltoid muscle. Then we see the subdeltoid bursa and then the hyperechoic linear collagen bands of the subscapularis tendon inserting on the humeral head. So that's what a nice normal subscapularis tendon looks like. And then we're gonna rotate the probe 90 degrees and we're gonna look at the subscapularis tendon in short axis. And in short axis, you'll see that there's multiple kind of slips of that tendon, that's normal. Those hyperechoic um, structures are the normal tendon of the subscapularis. There's usually three or four of them, and those are not calcium deposits. Some of our colleagues will have thought that those are calcium deposits, but it's not. And so that's a nice, healthy subscapularis tendon. So we've done the long head of the biceps tendon and the subscapularis tendon. The next tendon we're gonna look at is the supraspinatus. So for that, we're going to do a modified crass position to bring the tendon out from under the acromion. And then we're gonna find the biceps tendon and slide off of it. And we're looking for the bony landmark there of the greater tuberosity of the humeral head. So we see the round part of the articular side of the humerus and then this flat part there, that's the greater tuberosity, and the tendon is between the bursa and it's those nice parallel bands of those collagen fibers. Now, right at that junction between the curve and the flat part, there's little hypochoic divot. That's anisotropy. If you manipulate the probe, you'll see that there's actually fibers in there, right? But those fibers are running perpendicular to the angle of incinization. And so by rotating your probe, you can clean that up and you can actually see there's no tear there. See, here kind of looks like a tear. There you can see there's plenty of nice healthy tendon in there. When we're looking at the subscapular or supraspinatus tendon, this is the most commonly involved rotator cuff ten tendon with uh, um, tendon tears, partial tears, but also just plain old shoulder pain the most common underlying cause is a supraspinatus tendinosis. As we're evaluating the tendon, we're scanning it from the, the whole width of it and breadth of it, but then also we're looking at the subdeltoid bursa over the top. Here, that's nice and normal, and there's no effusion or no significant thickening. We can then proceed a little bit posterior 
and we'll see that that greater tuberosity kind of plat plateaus or flattens out and elongates. That's where the infraspinatus starts to overlap and take over. So here is supra and then here is infraspinatus tendon and that is nice and intact. Now we've looked at this in long axis, so all the structures we evaluate, we evaluate in two planes. So we're going to rotate the probe 90 degrees and we're going to get this supraspinatus tendon in short axis too. So there we see in short axis the bright white divot on the right of the screen, that is the biceps tendon. Deep to that is a subscapularis tendon and then over here that's the supraspinatus tendon and then over here is the infraspinatus tendon. We call that the tire on the rim view. Now we've assessed the supraspinatus tendon and part of the infraspinatus. We're going to go back to the original position um, and lose the modified crass and we're going to go mo more posterior and we're going to see more of the infraspinatus tendon there as it's inserting on the bone and bridging across and we can see the infraspinatus muscle and deep to that we see the glenoid, the humeral head and the glenoid labrum and the glenohumeral joint and to confirm that you can actually rotate in live action the humerus and you can see that articular movement and we're looking there at the glenohumeral joint for any effusions or significant degenerative changes labral tears this isn't the gold standard for that but sometimes you can catch them now one other rotator cuff tendon that we need to take a look at is the teres minor and that's right there so that's the shape of the teres minor and just like that it's a little bit anisotrop and I'll clean that up right there so you can see that's nice and intact normal echo texture there next so we've looked at all the rotator cuff tendons, we looked at the glenohumeral joint. Now we're going to go superior and we're going to assess the acromioclavicular joint. So this is the clavicle, this is the acromion process. You can see the acromion process lateral to that, you see the supraspinatus tendon, the bursa deep to that, you see the humeral head. There's the AC joint right there. That's nice and normal. We don't see any significant degenerative changes. We don't see any effusion. We don't see any step off, step off defect. So that looks good through there. Now, this is a nice, normal, healthy uh, shoulder, but in the clinical practice, you can be examining the shoulder and it might have a whole bunch of positives and you don't know if it's frozen shoulder, if it's bursitis, if it's supraspinatus or uh, tendinopathy or tear or a calcific tendonitis. Well, you put the ultrasound on there and you can evaluate that rotator cuff in high resolution and come to a diagnosis point of care pretty quickly without needing further imaging. And that can help you accelerate your treatment plan.